In this video, I will be guiding you through the exercise of modeling the rubber duck. You will start modeling two spheres in front view. It's important to do this in front view and to make sure that the surface seams are pointing to the left. So when you start making a sphere in Rhino, when you pick a point and drag out the sphere, you will see that it is pointing towards the point where you picked the second point. Um, so I want to point that to the left, starting at zero. So I hold shift and drag my mouse to the left. And make another sphere here for the head. Now, before we can deform the shapes, you have to rebuild them because if you don't, this uh, sphere is a surface of lower degree, degree two. So, every deformation you make, you will see that the uh, surface actually kinks where you move the surface and we want uh, smooth transformation so we rebuild these shapes with the rebuild tool we use 8 by 8 and 3 degree to rebuild them and you will see that right now if you turn on control points with F10 we have more control points to work with and they transform smoothly. Now the first thing we need to do is to uh, move, flatten out these control points. As you can see, I constantly will uh, drag around points instead of trying to select them this way because there are two points behind each other. I'm selecting these and run the set pt set point command. I'm setting them only in the z direction according to the world alignment. And this will effectively give me the opportunity to place these points all at the same z location. Yeah, so now they're flattened out. Um, next, I'll move these two points. Let's put this to shade it. And I'll move this point up. Let's flatten this a little bit more. Now what you will see if I'm selecting here, I'm only selecting the points. If I drag around it in shaded mode, but by default, um, this doesn't happen in Rhino. So if you go to your Rhino preferences, in the mouse settings, or tools options mouse in windows i have this on because default it is looking like this so i make control point polygons pickable and i turn off allow selecting objects with control points on Uh, making control polygons pickable means that uh, you can select this way two points by clicking on the connection line between the points. Okay, so the next uh, step will be to increase the density of control points around this area to uh, allow more control over the shape of this transition here. 
that's why I need a little bit more control points to work with. And we do this with the insert not tool. You can find this under edit and then uh, control points insert not. So this is the service to insert not in and uh, objects like uh, these services have u and v direction and the white lines are the highlighting the direction in this case but we want to have an insertion of points not in this direction but in the other direction so i pick toggle here to select the v direction instead and it's probably best to do this in uh, the front view i'll pick location over here then i have more points to work with like so what you'll notice by the way is that uh, when once i start to drag with this handle here that it snaps to my mouse and that has to do with the settings in my gumball uh, so when it's too snappy dragging it snaps to my mouse if i set it to smooth dragging which is probably better for this freeform editing i can smoothly move without the point snapping to the point where my mouse is located Okay, so once that is done, we can do something similar with the head. So turn on the control points with F10. Select these points. Move this a bit. And again, I'm constantly dragging around the control points. And just uh, move around some points until you're satisfied with the shape. And let's take a look back at the uh, manual here. So we've done the flattening of the points. We still need to scale it a bit according to uh, this uh, manual. So let's do that still. We'll do that with the gumball. Let's place the head a little bit more on top, like so. We've done these edits, we've done these edits, inserted more control point with insert mode. And modified the head as well. So now we'll go, we're going to split the surface with a line and using the freeform curve for this. So I'm picking two points here. Something like that. Put this to uh, ghosted mode. And then I can run split or use the split tool in the menu to split this surface with this curve. Uh, 
Now you'll notice the uh, surface here has been rotated a bit. Uh, you can do so, but uh, I'll leave it like this for now. So we want to have a transition here between the two surfaces, something like this. A smooth tra transition. Uh, so I have to make two lines to uh, trim the surfaces. So I'll do that just with two straight lines. Modify them a bit. And what I'll aim for is uh, a cut in such a way that these uh, cuts are more or less perpendicular to each other. Then I'll use that to trim these two surfaces. Now once you have that uh, cut out, you can run the blend surf command. Pick the two edges. And I always prefer to have the starting seam uh, in the middle of my surfaces. So I pick this point and drag it to hopefully a quad point. Or intersection with the line is also fine. Like so. And that gives me this preview. Then you can play around with these uh, sliders. Uh, so the higher this number is, the more it will flow to the surface you connect to. So this is more like a harsh transition. And there's no uh, right or wrong here. You just make something that uh, looks okay. Now we can choose uh, tangency or uh, curvature. And uh, we choose curvature here because curvature gives a more fluent transition between the surfaces. So this uh, probably looks about right uh, at the default one. So let's leave it like that. And you can study that uh, transition with the uh, analyze surface environment map. As you can see, it's a really fluent transition between the surfaces. Now compare that with uh, tangency. Then you have more harsh transitions. And you get a cert certain kink in the reflection lines. Uh, so just keep it with uh, the blend surface with um, curvature continu continuity. Okay. So we've done the splitting, we've done uh, the transition with blend surf. The next step is uh, to model the eye of the ducky. Um, this is done here with a conic curve, but uh, we'll just use a freeform curve for this. And then we're going to place that onto the head. Uh, 
Um, the easiest is to uh, draw this also in front view. So um, make a curve just slightly underneath the uh, x axis. I'll show you in a second why. So picking three points here, then making the revolve. A full circle I'll split the surface with the split tool using the isocurve option in the U direction making this uh, black material Default material, choose plastic, making it black. We'll make a new material for this as well. Leaving it white. And while we're at it, let's make this and that one color okay now, before uh, placing the eyes on top of the head, I want to make sure that the eye is more or less the size that I want. So let's start with this one. And um, then we're going to use Orient on Surface. Now, Orient on Surface is like mapping from one plane to another plane um, so the plane we're mapping from is the top view plane and the plane we're mapping to should be a plane that is oriented towards the uh, surface so if you make a new C plane uh, by surface then you notice that the plane will be aligned with that surface. And so from the top view, we map to this plane with the orient on surface. So going back to top. So starting the orient on surface. Now the point that I pick here, I want the point to be aligned with this endpoint, but I don't want to pick this point because if I do so, that point will be aligned with the surface. Choosing prompt for scale here. And as you can see, the eye will be completely inside of the head. So I don't want that, I want um, orient on serve. So I pick this, not this quadrant point here, but I use project. And this will project it back to the uh, x-axis. Uh, that's why I want this to be slightly below the x-axis. And let's turn on history now and pick that point, drag out a direction for the uh, orientation, uh, surface to orient on this, this head surface, and then start the orientation. And I use copy here. So something like that, dragging out the size. 
and then uh, ending the command and since I've used history for this I can now uh, modify this I a bit so for example scaling it a bit or moving it up and down with the option function up down keys uh, to sink it more or less into the head I could even uh, modify the orientation a bit uh, if I would like so. Uh, for example, if I rotate this slightly, you will notice that it will also update in that view. Okay. Um, once that eye is located uh, correctly, I can also mirror the one to the other side using history. And since my duck is uh, located right at the X and Y axis, I can pick my X axis to uh, mirror. Again, uh, I can slightly modify this, even with control point editing, if I would like. Holding shift here to scale in all directions. Okay, so once um, satisfied with the uh, overall appearance, you could uh, even trim uh, these eyes with the surfaces. Let's do that in wireframe mode. So using that to trim We'll get a history warning here because it breaks the relation between this and the uh, transformed objects, but that's okay. Let's hide the curves with cell curve. Followed by option H, hide, or control H on the uh, on Windows, and hide this as well. And that completes this exercise.